Welcome to Minor League Cricket on 99.9 Forum. Jared Kimber with me, two incredible experts, former New Zealand uh, fast bowler Ian O'Brien, uh, P- Peter Della Pena from ESPN Crick Info, but both of them are broadcasters, podcasters, uh, writers, just general men of incredible talent. And we have just seen the end of an absolute brilliant game of cricket, the final of the minor leagues. S- Seattle Thunderbolts have won best kit, best team. In fact, are they the best team, Peter Della Pena, or were they the most informed team at the right time? I think it was the latter of the two. If you asked me before the playoffs started, I would have said the Dallas Mustangs were the best team in the tournament field. But they ran into a buzzsaw in the form of the Seattle Thunderbolts, and lightning struck in Houston during the playoff series that they had, where the Thunderbolts swept them in the two matches, and they just kept on going on that runaway train into the final and the form that they showed in Houston during that playoff series against Dallas, they showed it again here. And again, if you looked on paper, you would say in the semifinal, they played against the strikers. They probably didn't play the best game. And I would make a similar case. I don't even think they played the best game here tonight. And yet they still won because in the key moments, they came up big. We don't like talking about momentum, but confidence is a thing in sport. The fact that they kind of won in different ways. You look at the, the the way they swept Golden State on the way in, then the game against Dallas, the game against the Strikers, this game. Little differences all the time tells you that, yeah, they might not have always been playing perfectly, but they believed that they were onto something. Yeah, and, and, and understanding and knowing how to win is 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 priceless. And finding ways of of getting to winning totals whether batting first or batting second finding ways of de- defending winning totals or okay totals is, is just one of those skills and when you're hot it, it does tend to keep rolling your way uh fergie you know, uh, alex ferguson the Manchester United always used to get Fergie time. When you're the better team, things just, well, not necessarily the better team, but when you have winning, you t- things just tend to keep going your way. And that's how it went with the, with, with the Thunderbolts. Great shirts, as we said, best kit in the, in, in, in the, certainly in this stage of the finals by some distance. And they didn't play the prettiest of cricket, but they did just enough. And I think that Atlanta fire team's very good. And uh, I think they made some 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 errors. And we discussed it on commentary, Jared. I think they made some mistakes that, in their bowling innings, especially. PDP, if I talked to you, I'm going to say a month ago, and I said to you, give me the odds on Seattle Thunderbolts winning the title, what would you have had them? 30 to 1. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking of the craps table. I'm visualizing the snake eyes and the box cars on the craps table. Thirty I mean, to one odds. It is a remarkable run. Is it? Can you take us through? Probably is. I suppose it's the Golden State um, series that kind of well certainly changes the way they're playing, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the season, they were very much in danger of not making the playoffs, but they came up right at the right time at the end of the regular season in a must-win scenario to clinch a playoff spot and then they just kept on going and, and it was just confidence if if that's the word that you guys want to use <laughs> Armit Singh epitomizes that just not just in his playing style hitting all those sixes that he hit against Dallas in that weekend in Houston but his body language you look at him on the field and when I was on air on the broadcast uh, here on Willow TV in the U.S. I said he was like Bruce Banner turning into the Incredible Hulk. He he was hulking up today on the field. He was hulking up yesterday. He was hulking up today. You see him on the field, just the fire, the energy that he brings on the field. He's just so intense. And for anybody who might want to poo-poo this and say, oh, it's minor league cricket, it's the big show is going to come next year, major league cricket, you would never know that from looking at Harmeet Singh because that guy, like I said, he was hulking up the entire weekend in the key moments. He just wanted to tear somebody's head off and hulk You're talking smash. about an IPL player, uh, you know, a Mumbai first-class player. This guy has played proper first-class cricket. You look at him out there, and he was, I mean, he was almost boiling over. He probably shouldn't have been playing in this final. He probably should have been suspended. Instead, his suspensions were suspended um, until next season. Uh, you know, big-name player, uh, perhaps, but... Uh, you know, all all game, all, all both games really. Iob, he was he was just firing up, wasn't he? This meant a lot to him. 
Yeah, look, whatever gets you going, but 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 there has to be a level, and 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 I, we saw yesterday, and it's been confirmed that that he went uh, over and above <laughs> that that level. Um, there, there, there's two ways of playing the game, though, and we, you can become over aroused at the same stage. And and I'm I got to admit, PDP, you have a wonderful Vince McMahon hulking up voice. That that is a very good Vince McMahon, and I've enjoyed that. But but yeah, the, sometimes you you do need to carry and give off a lot more emotion. You need to carry that emotion and you need to give it away as well and so i dare say he slept well last night with the emotion that he was giving away that body language and that that enthusiasm that emotion that he that he's spreading around the field trying to keep everyone in that in that that same level as he's at and again tonight he's trying to drag people along with him and that that takes a lot that takes a lot out of you um you know certainly uh, physically and, and mentally so he'll again look he'll sleep well at some stage um but it's a it's a tough way to continually play your cricket. He has to find a way where his emotions are more level and he can bring everyone along with him because that is much more sustainable. Short term, enjoyed it, uh, but he does need to temper it a little bit in places. Uh, Hamid Singh, big name, uh, IPL player, major league signing, right? Shubham Ranjani, uh, not a big name. Uh, uh, Nate Hayes, I'm just going to look at my notes for all my notes on him over here. Uh, Nate, Hayes, Nate Hayes says, mystery guy. Uh, that's all I got out of Nate Hayes. I said to you beforehand, PDP, I'm just going to throw it to you. You can take us through Shubham uh, Ranjani. And you're like, well, I don't know anything about him. Uh, he's come from nowhere. And he's just, uh, I'm pretty sure while we were, just before we started recording, he was named player of the match. Uh, outstanding uh, anchor innings, I suppose, with the bat. We, at times we were thinking, mate, could you hit some fours and sixes? Uh, my favourite moment was when he actually lap swept a ball onto his own helmet. Um, but with the ball bowling off cutters and leg cutters, this is, a, this is an amateur cricketer who's come from nowhere, and I thought he was outstanding. Uh, in particular, at the end there, I was standing next to, in the, in the last four or five overs of the match, I was standing next to former USA captain, Social Net Carney, who also played India under 19 against Australia way back when. And the two of us were kind of like muttering under our breath and then kind of rising to almost screams, not quite so the players could hear us, but we were getting frustrated because in that 18th over, that crucial 18th over when Aaron Jones was still at the crease, he was bowling one pace. We saw almost a carbon copy of what Jesse Singh did wrong yesterday. And we were both kind of muttering and then we started like, slower ball, cutter, why, why don't you change your pace, cutter? What are you doing? Slipping a cutter. And then on the fourth ball, he did it. And he got the wicket. And Aaron Jones, who was timing him, he was locked in, was way out in front of it, got that slower ball in there, and then gets Emil Abonzo next ball. And that broke the back of the chase. So it was the cleverness and the shrewdness in the situation to understand what wasn't working and then quickly to adjust and figure out what was going to work and what ultimately did work to get them to victory. Uh, Shubham Ranjani. PDP, you, know, you had us. You had sorry, PDP. You had us in the air, didn't you? Because I was said yeah. those first two balls that went for top fours that that, um, that Aaron Jones hit six and four, both half volley or York a full toss half volley, and I just said it has to be hitting the pitch, and he did next delivery and hits the top of the stumps. You were listening to us, weren't you, PDP? I had you in my ear. Yes, we're yes, always in yes. his ear. Um, I be like when you look at it. So Ranjani, as we said, he's come from nowhere. He hasn't even played a full season of minor league cricket yet. Uh, the way that team owners work in franchise leagues, quite often a big performance in a big <laughs> game helps. He could have gone from basically being an amateur cricketer who no one knows anything about to being a major league cricketer uh, in a few months' time. I mean, he showed that much. Uh, he may, may be a squad member rather than a star player for a major league team. But he's given himself a good chance. It, it really it does show that if you play a couple of good games in minor league cricket at the right time, it, it couldn't actually change a lot of perception about you. Good games on TV count for way more than than you would ever imagine. The people that have created short careers or even decent in some in some cases decent careers, it's just taken one TV appearance. There's been TV there, there's been commentators there, there's been bright lights, and there's been media. I even called him Rahana at one stage in the game. That's how, like, and I apologised on, but that's that's how unknown in terms we had, of, We had, know, on commentary, we were calling him Rinjani because someone, that was what we were told. No one knows anything about him. It's it's incredible. And, 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 and he's, 
he's 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 bamboozled, he batted so well, batted cleanly, batted maturely, got got through to a good position and, and played a wonderful innings. Could have had a hat trick, could have had five with his last three, you know, last three deliveries of his of his spell. But but just yeah, owned the game. In a T20 game, one player can win the game, and that and that's the wonderful thing about the format. You can have one player that will win a game from nowhere. While it wasn't just one player won this game, I tell you what, that's the majority share of winning that game. Well played. He had a partner as well, didn't he, PDP? So take us through. They sort of co-anchored the innings together. Yeah, Andre Skos, who is been one of the key players throughout the season and he's not the captain army Singh is the captain but he's somebody who is leaned on heavily for his leadership he got a hot start in the power play but then after the power play he went through kind of a, a, a lull for a good couple of overs and he was able to build a bridge i'm a big fan of players who, who build a bridge know the role and build a bridge before the fireworks come into the end and he's a bridge builder so in that role you look at his his strike rate 48 off 44, I might not look like anything fancy, but he built a bridge until you could get to the end when Shadley Van Skalkvay came in, hit some key boundaries at the end, and allowed Ron Johnny to team up with Van Skalkvay at the end. So Andres Gauss's innings might not look all that fancy on, on a scorecard, but it was very crucial in terms of building a bridge to get to the end and keep that innings going to where they could get to what turned out to be a defensive total. Obviously, this is about the Thunderbolts and, uh, you know, and you know, it's probably there's another time to talk about, uh, you know, the Atlanta fire and what happened with them. But I right, just a couple of words on Aaron Jones. I think we've been so impressed with him. I've seen him bat before. I think he looks even better than than I remember him. Um, and I thought it was a great innings. Obviously, he didn't quite get them over the line. But uh, what are your thoughts on him as a player? Uh, he's my pick of the weekend. Uh, he's my absolute pick of the weekend. Uh, look, uh, Andreas uh, House, look, he, fantastic innings and, and played really, really well. Uh, and, you know, a couple of really good innings uh, across the, the two games. But just the way the maturity that uh, Aaron Jones, his, his, his beautiful, beautiful light brown eyes and then 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 classical nature but the classical nature of his innings as well there is the, the other innings that Stephen Jones should be playing that uh, St uh, Stephen Taylor should be playing the other innings that these much more experienced guys should be playing where you mix your class and your timing and you have success um no ego just just good decision making and good crisp hitting hitting from good positions and hitting to positions where he hits uh two fantastic innings across the semi-final and final and it, it's sort of it's one of those one of those sort of scenarios where yeah he probably was a fraction slow today but but still put them put the here put the put the Atlanta fire in such a good position um very very good player uh, I'm looking forward to watching more and more of him I'm looking forward to talking to him at some stage I that I, I want to and I want to get in between that friendship between him and um him and Taylor as well I want to find out more about that friendship just good the performances and personalities I said it yesterday I said it on commentary on commentary that's how you promote cricket and that's how you get it into into more people playing it performances and personalities he's definitely one of them that does ticks both of those boxes uh Player that we, we weren't sure how hard he could hit. He doesn't have a great strike rate. And uh, came out, Shudley Van Schultveik. They didn't really have anyone else to throw at the end of their innings, the, the Thunderbolts. Uh, so the big fella went out and got a couple of boundaries away and then obviously bowled the important overs at the other end, PDP. I mean, he's a quality player. Once you saw 18 runs needed with, with only a couple of wickets in hand, he just wasn't going to lose that game for them, was he? He's somebody who, when he was first signed, and he was one of the first signings that Major League Cricket brought in from South Africa, and you look at his record, and you look at his resume, and you think, God, with all that money, blank checks, why would they sign this guy? Nothing remarkable about him. Why, why would you waste money on him? Of all the people you could try and recruit. You have to see him in person. You have to see him on video. You have to see him in a live match to really appreciate what a good player he is and what kind of value he does bring because he's one of these guys who does everything. He, he can bat. He's a floater. He can bat in any position. He can bat three. He can bat five. He can bat seven. And then with his bowling, he's just very, very candy, very shrewd. Again, he's not express, but he bowls at the death because he's just very shrewd. He knows how to land the Yorkers, land the wide Yorkers, 
mix in the cutters, do everything to keep everybody off balance. And in the field, I mean, some of the efforts he made running from backward point just to save two runs early in the game, the energy on the Thunderbolts bench when he there was one ball in particular where he sliced over backward point, sliced over cover point, whatever, and he bolted from the ring to save two runs. And if you were in the ground, the, the energy that that created on the Thunderbolts bench with Adam Crosswaite, the head coach, and the owners, and everybody else, so they were going nuts when he saved those two runs. And that, that kind of example setting that he does, to the younger guys in particular, that's why he was one of the first guys that was signed by the people behind Major League Cricket. And the influence that he has on younger players in particular up in Seattle and anywhere else he travels around the country, you see those kind of one percenter type things that he does, and then it makes sense. Oh, this is why he's here, because he does these things to put his team in a position to win, and it rubs off on everybody around him. Uh, uh, IOB, Fani Simhadri, I've, I've, I'm all in. I've bought shares. Uh, uh, I don't understand why he's not playing for USA already. Uh, if I was working for an IPL franchise, I'd be like showing them clips from my phone um, to the owners and going, what about this guy? And they'd be going, why are you showing me this this uh, slow left arm cutter bowler? Um, he's just been announced as the MVP of the season. Probably it gets them home in that second last over. Didn't bowl, didn't bowl all of his overs brilliantly today. Just knocks over getting wickets, so doesn't he? What a bizarre mixture of skills. And uh, there was the ball. It was actually hit for four by Corne Dry. That one that dropped. That was like Lassif Malinga, like drop on it. Some of the things he does with the ball um, are incredible. Yeah, I, I think he, I think I think he's good. I think I think he's very good. If I had shares, I'd sell them to you, uh, though, Jared. I, I I would pass them on. I, I'm not. I'm not. In terms of put him on really good T20 wickets, I don't think the, you see quite the success that you see him on a pitch where it just grips and holds up. I understand that the, the change of angles, your change of delivery angles, change of height, the low arm, and, and then the, you know some of the, 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 the finesse he puts on the ball. Uh, but you get him on a, on, on a true, flatter, quicker, uh, more true wicket, I think you can hit through the line of him a, a lot more. Uh, I'm happy to be proved wrong. And, I just think and I'm because happy he gets to, that to, drop to, to, to miss out on those yeah, shares. Yeah, because he hit, gets mm. that drop on the ball. Yep. I just feel what that's what they what you just said is what they said about Benny Howe. And then when he got on those good wickets, everyone got caught at long on and long off. Because the, usually when you have a good wicket, you have longer boundaries. So I, I think there's a lot there, but I can understand why a cricket person would look at him and go, it doesn't make sense. It looks like a mismatch of skills. No, I. I, I really like Benny Howell though. If you if you want to if you want to compare, I, I thought Benny Howell was a good talent because of because of his the the variation that that Benny Howell had the drop the topspin that Benny Howell especially got on a, on his slow balls. I just think that overall the stock ball becomes easy easier to hit on good wickets, and it's the stock ball that has to you have to bowl the most of. Um, I, I, again, look, I'm happy to, uh, to to have to have taken the short money on my on my shares now and, and lose out in hey, the long you, term. We got him at MVP. And rates. Happy to be proven wrong. <laughs> look, well, that's that's admittedly right. So I actually do quite all right on my shares. But look, I, I think you know, wonderful performer. You know, and 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 those skills at this level. They are worth some money. They are. They are. You know, you're worth having them in your team. Um, and I guess I have to compare him to to those apples. So yes, absolutely, wonderful player, really, really well done. And and playing in those in those scenarios in those games, he is he is well as it's proved with MVP. He's proved great foil. Uh, PDP, um, this is in many ways the most important minor league season. I know the first one usually would probably be fairly important, but because this is leading into major league cricket. Uh, is this been a success from your vantage point? You're very, you're often very critical of USA cricket vantage point. Depends on how you want to measure success, <laughs> Jared. Uh, at the top end of the league, when you get to finals weekend like this, when you get to the playoffs, it is very, very competitive. There's very few weak links. My issue with the league is that you still have in a lot of franchises very poor management, very poor ownership, who doesn't take the league seriously. And what do I mean by that? I mean, you have cases and examples where the Hollywood Master Blasters, their owner, 
who's in his 60s, decides, well, I bought the team. I'll pick the 11, and I'll pick and myself I in the 11. He's onto something. And so maybe he heard, maybe, maybe that's why the lights went off. But, you know. I love that. So I love that. You have, you have a team where you've got uh, national team players in the Hollywood Master Blasters. You've got guys like Nisark Patel, who's currently a USA national team player. You've got guys who in the past have played for USA, like Robbie Timberwall, Marunel Patel, other guys out there as well. And if you subscribe to the theory that you're only as strong as your weakest player, well, when you have a 64-year-old in the lineup, you become pretty weak in a big way. And in spite of the fact that they have all those USA national team players, two years in a row now, the Hollywood Master Blasters have finished in last place in their division because they have an owner who very clearly doesn't take it seriously. He's not the type of owner, Jared, who's looking at analytics and is analyzing Fani Simhadri's ball and thinking, mm, and maybe I can find a Fani Simhadri coin and get him into the 11. He's messing around with the spot, and he's not the only one like that. There are several other owners who are in their 40s and 50s who pick themselves in the 11. You're and actually selling me on the league more. I, I know that's not what you're trying no. to do, <laughs> but I'm all in. How much are these, how much but, are these teams? How much are these teams? But, I'm yeah, taking yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, buying, me up. buying if, the if, team. If, if, that's why I went out before this podcast, Jed. I went out to the, to the gas station and I bought some Mega Millions yeah. and some Powerball tickets so I can hit the lottery and, and get my own team. But not surprisingly, all those teams where those owners are doing that kind of thing, every single one of those teams finishes in last place in their division. The teams that are taking it seriously and are actually trying to scout properly are the ones who wind up coming to Morrisville at the end of the year in both seasons. So at the top end, I think it's fantastic. The quality is there. You can see that on display in in particular, both Thunderbolts matches. The semi I thought the two most exciting matches over the course of the last two years for finals weekend were the matches that the Thunderbolts played. The, last year, the, the semifinals and the final were both fairly one-sided. Um, the two most exciting matches were the, the Thunderbolts and the Strikers, and now the, the Thunderbolts and the Fire. When you get to this stage, the quality is there. My concern is you need to get that quality enhanced across the board, across the entire league, throughout the season from start to finish. And that's what they need to fix going forward for next OB, season. We had a chat before the tournament, and I uh, well, sorry, before the finals, and I, I, I roped you into this, and you agreed. And I think you were a little bit skeptical about the the level of, of, of the skill of some of the players. And then you looked at some of the highlights, and you rang me up sort of excitedly going, they're, they're, this is better than I thought it was going to be. Now you've seen the full games. Where you know Where do you sort of sit? It's not that I, I it, for me, it, it was it was commentating on poor cricket and we saw plenty of poor cricket. Let's be fair, we've seen three games and we saw plenty of poor cricket in terms of some of the quality of the cricketers, some of the quality of decision making, and then certainly some of the, the, the batting decision making. We saw some we saw some pretty poor cricket. And that's the bit for me that, that becomes because I want to stay positive and you want to you want to celebrate the good as opposed to highlight the bad but I had to find a way that let, let's be constructive about this and that and that if 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 Stephen Taylor looks back at his two innings across this weekend he looked fantastic twice and played dumb dumb shot made dumb dumb decisions not just execution that's just dumb dumb decisions and that and that's what I'm talking about but so it's not just the not just the quality of the player it's the quality of the decisions but I've, I overall I've loved it in terms of I love watching it um I think I could play, <laughs> you know, and that's the 45 and I haven't got enough money to own a team, but, but I do look at, I, I do. Do you uh, have the hand and, and that, that's a, but that's a re Oh, I'll be all right. <laughs> I'd have to feel it short, fine leg though. Don't forget. Um, no, no, I, I don't think I could play it. I am I'm, I'm having, I, I think I could bowl a few overs and go. Okay. It, but, but, but that's okay. Because I, you know, there are, there are that age, not that age, but but those skills still have a place to play in that kind of cricket in, in terms of we're seeing people come out of their their main career and go into this cricket, which helps bring it all up. So the standard of cricket is getting there. And it's not right now. It's two years time, isn't it? It's two years time on the back of these sort of facilities that we saw at Church Street, uh, Church Street Park, on the back of those that sort of investment in two years time. This is a really good in, uh, uh, USA team. The basis in two years time, maybe five 
five years' time, certainly inside a generation, which is what, what it takes new uh, new international teams. It takes a generation to, to, to form and have that sort of success. I see that happening in half a generation, maybe even a quarter. So five years' time, this, uh, this USA team, with the facilities, access to facilities like this, I see them 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 being um, being very entertaining and 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 and, and they're gonna, they'll be playing some international cricket pretty soon. You know, international cricket against international cricketing teams in terms of big big teams, big events, and and having some success. I've enjoyed it. Uh, PDP, uh, we'll finish off here. Uh, you came on my podcast, and you and I, having followed the history of USA cricket, are always quite skeptical uh, of these sorts of things. But we we I think we were more positive about this. Major League Cricket than we had been about most things. And since then, they've gone off and found a bunch of money. And, and, and here we are chatting about it again. Now, looking ahead, the fact that uh, Major League Cricket is next. Uh, how do you feel about this whole thing? Are you, you know, uh, is it starting to feel more like something that exists rather than just an idea? I think... It'll feel like it exists when I see what you see in Morrisville happen in other cities. So in terms of the crowds, the quality of the facilities, especially the crowds, the fans, it's very hard to replicate the fan turnout that you get in Morrisville, North Carolina, anywhere else in the country. There have been attempts to have what they've called these minor league cricket, major league cricket community days, where they put in a hell of a lot of promotional effort to get all these people to come out. And I was at one of them in Houston earlier this summer, and they had four or 500 people to come out. And again, there was another one in Philadelphia, identical thing, that had at least a 1,000 people. They put all that effort in. And then the next week, you get three people. The retention of fans isn't there. And that's a struggle. You don't have that issue in Morrisville, which is why they keep having the final here, because regardless of whether or not the Morrisville franchise actually makes the final, there's proof of concept here. It goes back to 2018 when you had the sub-regional T20 World Cup qualifier when USA and Canada played under the lights in front of 2,000, 2,500 people. The atmosphere was incredible, and they knew they could replicate that, whether it was USA, Canada, or the Strikers, or the Thunderbolts, or the Atlanta Fire, whatever. This is a, a thriving cricket community. The challenge now is to replicate that, and... USA historically has been a country where you have, and we've talked about this before on your podcast and other places, uh, and I might sound like a broken record saying this, but historically this is a country where you have cricket fans living in America who are not necessarily fans of American cricket. How do you convert the people who are earlier today who were glued in front of their TVs watching India versus Pakistan in the Asia Cup in the UAE, how do you get those same people to suddenly care about minor league cricket, major league cricket, the U.S. national team, all those things, and not just in Morrisville, to get those people to turn out and support local cricket in California, in Seattle, in Texas, in even in Florida. It's a huge struggle. I mean, you, a couple weeks ago, I was in Florida where they had 12,000 people for India versus West Indies, and that's the same venue where they had India in 2019 play against the West Indies. Same thing, 12,000 people. And four weeks later, at the very same venue, they had 19 people show up to watch USA play their first ever ODI at the same facility in Florida. So these are historical issues in terms of fan support, galvanizing people, getting them to believe in something local rather than something on TV in, in a far off place. And when that proof of concept is achieved in other cities outside of Marisol, I think that's when you'll start to see more and more people buying into the whole franchise concept. Because again, CPL tried it in Florida, Caribbean Premier League, tried 2016, 2017, 2018, and they said the historical thing was, oh, you need big names. People aren't caring about cricket in the U.S. because there's not big enough names. Well, 2018, why is the CPL no longer coming back to America? You had Andre Russell, one of the biggest names in T20 franchise cricket anywhere in the world, captain the Jamaica Tawas, and you had Steve Smith when he was in exile at, after Sandpaper Gate. He was playing for the Barbados Tridents, one of the biggest names in international cricket in any format, and they played in front of 700 people in the stadium in Florida, you could hear conversations on the pitch echoing across the ground because nobody was there. It took me 15 minutes across the first three overs of the match to go through the entire stadium and hand count every single person who was there, and I counted 729. And that's why the CPL is no longer coming back because even with Andre Russell and even with Steve Smith, they couldn't sell tickets. You need to have that local cricket support in America, and you're seeing signs of that in Morrisville but you need to see signs of that in other cities. Peter Delapena, thank you Does very it, much. Is it? Is it? Oh. Is it? 
Sorry, does it just feed off? Does it just feed off that whole Desi community that that we see so so full in, 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 in around the Morrisville League? Well, you've got a lot of yeah, the Indian diaspora, the Desi community supports cricket here, and that's pretty much the majority of the cricket community in everywhere else in the country too. Mm. But for some reason, they only support that that community only mm-hmm. supports cricket locally in Morrisville. It's very strange, but okay. y- there's there's countless examples. I've come across where you've got the first generation immigrants of India who have been living in the U.S. for how many years, and they just don't care about American cricket. They don't care about local cricket. They're still focused on India. And there's a number of players. Sai Mukamala is one of them who is playing for the Stallions, born and raised in New Jersey. Rahul Jarawala, born and raised in Northern California. Okay. And those kids have flown. I know Rahul has flown to England. He went to the 2019 World Cup to watch India at um, Old Trafford, the India-Pakistan match at Old Trafford, and I, I believe he watched the semifinal against New Zealand as well. He flew out for that, and then he stayed for the World Cup final at Lords, even though India wasn't in the final. But they've flown all around the world to watch India. The first time Rahul Jarwal's dad ever saw USA play in person was when his son made his debut in Texas. So if that's what it takes to convert some of those first-generation Indian immigrants into USA cricket fans... yeah. That's all I'll tell you. All you need to do is get your son into the national team. Boom. You're a USA cricket fan all of a sudden. Takes a you generation. You need to see more of that. Oh, you need to yeah. see more and more of that to convert the fans to become fans of US cricket instead of just being cricket fans yeah, living the other, in the USA. The other option, of course, is that some of these people buy the team and then pick themselves. Um, I don't know if that works for international cricket, but I love I love the uh, thing. Uh, huge from Seattle, uh, mm. Thunderbolts, uh, Atlanta Fire probably gave that away. That's probably a podcast for another time. Uh, but uh, thank you very much, Peter Della Pena from Crick Info, Stars and Stripes podcast, his photos, former knife salesman, and Ian O'Brien, coach, commentator, writer, underwear um, uh, seller, and uh, former Into the Wind bowler for Dan Vittori. Thank you very much for coming on the Minor League on 99.94 podcast. And we, I'm sure we'll be covering more of the Minor League as we go forward. And then there's the Major League. There's much to cover. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Next time. 